This is Game Tech, where we break down the tech that drives the games we love, and personally, I love keyboard and mouse controls and shooters. And while I'm primarily a PC gamer, I spend a lot of time on my PS4 as well. Which is why I was hyped up to get my hands on Hori's Tactical Assault Commander, or TAC Pro, a plug-and-play keypad and mouse combo that emulates PC controls for the PS4. I figured I'd then have an advantage over other players in PvP and carry the team in PvE during the Destiny 2 beta. However, the limitations of the TAC Pro left my performance inconsistent at best. The keypad itself is wonderfully designed. Its near-perfect placement of all the DualShock 4 controls make it easy to use straight out of the box. Square, which is typically the reload action in games, is where R would be on the keyboard. Circle, typically crouching, is in the control keys place. And L3 for sprinting is in shift's place. Triangle, which is commonly used for weapon switching, is in the Q keys place. And obviously the movement keys work just like WASD. X, which is commonly used for the jump action, is right where your thumb is, just like having a space bar. A joystick also resides near the thumb area which can be used for movement, just like the controller's left stick if you prefer, but it can also act as the D-pad. Almost everything you'd find on a DualShock 4 is here, the touchpad, the home button, and the options and share buttons. The package mouse fits nicely into the hand, Clicking felt right, and the two side buttons were great for melee actions and grenade throws. A DPI switch lets you swap between three sensitivity settings on the fly. The mouse cord is real short, but it's long enough to plug into the keypad. The keypad then plugs into the PS4, and the TAC Pro is pretty much ready to go. So while the keypad and the mouse have essential features, aiming with the mouse is where the TAC Pro falls short. Inconsistent tracking and sensitivity of mouse movement negates the key advantage of having a mouse. Precise aiming. You won't get one-to-one -one tracking in games. So coming from a shooter on the PC to the TAC Pro on the PS4, aiming felt extremely awkward. You can adjust the mouse acceleration on the TAC Pro, but there wasn't any setting that came close to true mouse movement. With acceleration at its lowest setting possible, swiping the mouse across the mouse pad actually showed some deceleration. That's on top of the straight-up inconsistent sensitivity. Between picking up and quickly swiping the mouse, and moving the mouse across slowly, the cursor moved at different speeds. This frequent change of sensitivity also extends to aiming down sights, and made things even more difficult. Destiny 2 has generous auto-aiming, adding to the awkward feel of the mouse. It's also strange because auto-aim is necessary to be competent in the game given the unstable tracking. Now, we tinkered with several in-game sensitivity settings, acceleration modes on the TAC Pro, and different DPI settings on the mouse, but no combination of these settings resolved the erratic tracking. With that said, there were moments where I felt more in control and accurately anticipated the mouse behavior. I could land consecutive shots with the Sunshot hand cannon at times. I could also move from one target to another in a snappy fashion with the Scathelock auto rifle, helpful for taking down those damn harpies during the final boss battle in the strike. But being able to do this banked on my ability to predict how the mouse would track with my hand movement. And the reality is that we shouldn't have to worry about consistent sensitivity when playing in a competitive crucible match, let alone a PvE strike mission. The point of having mouse and keyboard controls on a console is to get the same precision of PC gaming. When I went back to playing on a DualShock, I kind of missed having the feel of a keypad and mouse and sort of lamented sniping with an analog stick. But I much preferred playing Destiny 2 on the PS4 with a controller. It's hard to recommend the Hori Tech Pro based on my experience, and especially at 150 bucks, you're better off investing in a pro-grade controller if you're looking for an advantage in console games. Speaking of aftermarket controllers, check out our roundup of the best PS4 controllers to help up your game, and subscribe to our channel here at GameSpot to keep up with game tech. Give this video a like, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.